Greetings, Earthlings. Tis the season. Uh, you know, I used I used to not believe in Christmas. Believe it or not, it's it's just something that I kind of kind of slipped out of my head, you know. And, uh, but I, it all changed one snowy night. So so this happened while I was at the grocery store. I was working at the grocery store. I was I was a cashier, you know, in my college days. Uh, this was Christmas break, so no school, just groceries. Uh, our story takes place on the day before Christmas Eve. So I was working a 13-hour shift so that my boss would let me have the eve and the big day off. Uh, the, the store was playing Christmas music, of course, and the, the, the Christmas music loop is way shorter than our normal music loop. <sighs> it's crazy. By the 15th time, I heard... Hang a shining star upon the highest bar. Oh, yeah, no, that's. Oh, I was done. I was done. They had that song on there twice, and it was like a one-hour loop. So, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm done. And and I was done. I was done with Christmas. My coworker from the seafood department, Brandon Yuri, uh, he walked up to me with his black Santa hat that said "Bah humbug." Hello, Martian. He said. You don't look very merry. You should join the Scrooge gang. Me and Ryoko are the Grump Grinches. And I said, look, Brayton, I do enjoy working here. The people are great, but I am tired of this fake commercial Coca-Cola Christmas. Ooh, he said, better be careful what you say. Someone special might be in the building today. Uh, who's that? I asked, thinking that maybe it was the owner of the store. You know, he stopped in sometimes. But he was already gone. One of my favorite sackers, Johnny Garbanzo, turned and said, Well, that's my shift. Time to go. It was 9 p.m. The store closed at midnight, and so did I. Slowly, one by one, everyone else left the store until around 11 p.m. when the last other cashier left, and I was alone. Well, except for the customers, you know, wacky people coming into the grocery store at 11 p.m. So I'm just hanging around, you know, cleaning. Then this guy walks up to me, you know, coming to check out or whatever. He had a bright red suit and a hat with white trim, and he was a he was a tall gentleman. He did not look like Santa, but boy was I wrong. Ho ho ho! He said, "That should have tipped me off that he was no ordinary customer." But I asked for his rewards card. He said, "Ho ho ho! I'll give you my phone number." That was my second clue but I couldn't quite figure out who he was yet. But my final clue came when his name popped up. Oh, uh, are you Chris Kringle, AKA Father Christmas, I am Santa Claus for real? Ho ho ho, that is my name. I had immediately noticed that his area code was only used at the North Pole. That's when I realized this guy was bad news. Good news for me, I love bad news. He was buying over $1,000 worth of fidget spinners and I had to scan every single one. There was no one else in the store. As a cashier, I tried to strike up a conversation. That's a lot of fidget spinners, I said. Ho ho ho, it's a lot of kids, he replied. Oh, are you a teacher or something? Ho ho ho, no, I'm a gift giver. This guy was on the older side, so I thought maybe this was a little bit weird. Then I noticed his name tag said Santa Claus. Of course, I, I never trust name tags, so I didn't believe it. He, maybe he was like a mall Santa, or just, just a real festive guy, you know? The real Santa wouldn't even need a name tag, right? By this point, you know, I had checked out all of his fidget spinners. I told him, your total comes out to $1,000.32. Do you take card? Of course, sir. Ho ho ho, excellent! He ran his card through. I finished with my typical, you know, you saved $43 and you have $1.50 off a gallon of gas. Thank you so much for shopping with us and have a great night. Merry Christmas! And a very Merry Christmas to you as well, Martian! Ho ho ho! He winked at me and left the store. It wasn't weird that he knew my name because we all wore name tags. When it came closing time, I locked up and left the store. In the parking lot, I noticed something off. There was still another car parked in a customer spot. All the customers should have been gone, and no other employee should have been parked there. I was thinking that maybe a night shift guy parked in the wrong spot and I might give him a hard time, I walked over to the big red covered truck. When I peered inside though, there was nobody in the front, but there was somebody in the back. 
It was the red soup customer from earlier, tied up with wrapping paper taped over his mouth. I immediately climbed inside and started helping him. Are you okay? Who did this? But he looked at me and said, Ho ho ho. You don't have a lot of time, kid. Get out of here. This has nothing to do with you. I wanted out, so now they're dragging me back in. You do not want to get involved with these guys. They're rough. They're brutal. And they're coming back. Ho ho ho. No. I could never let a Santa Claus get hurt. Whether he's real or fake. I don't even believe in Santa Claus. But I believe in you. Then kid, I'm sorry. <sighs> ho ho ho. He pulled a candy cigarette out of his mouth. But you believe in the wrong guy. I ducked as the truck pulled away. I couldn't see who was driving, but I couldn't just let this sit. My phone battery was dead, so I hopped into my car and drove after them. After covertly following for a while, I came to an abandoned warehouse on the edge of town. But it was full of people. I snuck up closer. I couldn't quite hear what they said, but they were roughing up the Santa man. Using my stealth skill that I had acquired for my mentor, Marcus Aurelius de la Casa, I made my way inside, sneakily. Unfortunately, there was a bit of a problem. By equipping my stealth build, I had dropped my luck stat by three points. I heard them say, Hey, when I want to shoot you, you get shot, you feel me, gabish? Ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho, I don't want any trouble. This is just doing this is against my morals. I've, I've gone far enough for you lot, ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho. I don't want to add more bodies to the list. Just then, my reduced luck hit. I knocked over a pile of barrels that was just randomly there, and they sent a guard to check. It's fine, even if they see me, I thought. They don't know my face. I, I can just live in the woods for a few years. They'll never find me. But then they saw my shirt. He's from Bryce Chopper! Get him, Jotaro! Just then, Jotaro Kujo from Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Part 3 Stardust Crusaders started running after me. I ran up the stairs to the catwalk that went above the factory and started swinging across the light poles. But Jotaro was faster. He grabbed my arm and pulled me to the boss. Hey, you better explain pretty quick what you're doing in my hideout at 1 a.m. in the morning. I remembered back to my improv class in high school. My teacher had told us how to create characters on the fly to fit into any situation. She said, just think who could be there and what that kind of person might be like. If you have any props, those can really hurt. Help. Why did I say hurt? Of course. I puffed up my chest and put on my best mustache. My name is Haraban Diffenschwartz. I'm here on behalf of OSHA. We have heard rumors about this place, but we never knew it was this bad. I pulled out my OSHA certification I had gotten from a community college machine shop class. Oh, Mr. Haraban, pardon our rudeness. We have a bit of a situation here, see? You see, uh, Mr. Claus here don't want to stick to the contract. Uh, it says we own his branding and can use it in any way we like. But, uh, he doesn't want to do the commercial, see? Now, as Victor Gaflini, head of the marketing department here at Coca-Cola Inc., we own Christmas. And Sadie Claus here saying he's had enough of it. All right, now, Mr. Claus, if you would present your argument. Ho, 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 I signed a lifetime contract with the Coca-Cola company, it's true. But almost two lifetimes have passed, and they're still holding me to it. It's not enough that they made me wear red and put the entire Pepsi-Cola company board on the naughty list. Now they want me to appear on TV in the flesh for public endorsement. Well, as an OSHA-certified arbitrator, there seems to be a very simple solution. I looked closely at the contract. It says that Santa Claus shall be the property of Coca-Cola company for his lifetime. Now, sirrah, is your legal name Santa Claus? Ho ho ho, I don't have an SS card, if that's what you mean. Social security, yep, social security. But the missus calls me Chris Kringle. Well then, easy enough, I say. Tim Allen? Uh, I motioned for Tim Allen to come out of the corner and stand by us. Chris Kringle, aka Father Christmas, I am the real Santa Claus. By the power of invested in me, by the Occupational Safety Hazard Administration, I hereby declare your legally binding name to be Chris Kringle. And you, Tim Allen of Tool Time, I hereby declare that you shall henceforth and toward hither be known as Santa Claus. As I spoke the words, the hat left the old Santa 
transferred to Tim Allen as he became the Santa Claus. Ho, 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 Tim Allen said. Thank you, Mr. Harabond. You saved Christmas. And he flew off into the night sky. And I never saw him again. But sometimes, if you tune into the Hallmark Channel at just the right time, you can see him acting in advertisements for Coca-Cola. Merry Christmas, everyone. And from all us Santa believers, thank you, Tim Allen. <laughs>